Okay, so Newton's law of cooling. Um, so you have something that you take out of the oven, it's hot, and you want to cool it to room temperature, or, you know, you take a cup of coffee out of the microwave and it's too hot, so you want it to cool to a temperature where you could drink it. Um, it's that concept, okay? And it acts like a decay function because you're cooling things off. Okay. Um, you're only going to be able to cool your item, though, to as cold as the surrounding air. Like, it's not going to become zero. Like, if you take butter out of the fridge and you want to get it to room temperature, it's not going to go below the room temperature. Okay, so that creates a shift, a vertical shift in the function. And we're going to show you where this uh, function comes from. So the t uh, temperature over time, so it's a function of time, how long you know you take something out of the microwave or the refrigerator or whatever, maybe not the refrigerator, your room temperature is not going to be colder than the refrigerator. Okay, hopefully. Um, it's going to be a function a e to the um, kt plus, and we're going to put t sub s. That T sub S is the surrounding temperature. Okay, so they usually use an uppercase T for temperature. Okay, our model is based on a couple things. Um, but that's the basic form for an exponential function, right? We're going to put a capital A here, and I'll tell you what that means. And we have some B, some base to some ct plus t sub s. Okay, to get this formula, we're trying to get this formula up here, and I think I really want that to be a capital A, but um, I don't know why it's a lowercase a. Let's make it a capital A. All right, <clears throat> you have to think about that base, and you don't know what the base is. So a way around that is you can write it as e to the natural log of b to the ct. And we don't know what c and t are. That's okay. We're getting there. Um, and then you can write that as um, e to the ct natural log of b. And then we make a little statement here that C natural log B, we're going to replace that with some constant K. So now we get our new formula for Newton's law of cooling. The uh, temperature over time is going to be equal to A, and I'll talk about A in a minute, E to the KT plus T sub S. And we already talked about T sub S. So our little t is time. The capital T sub s, that's the surrounding temperature. And then the a, that represents the difference between the initial temperature, so you take it out of the microwave and it's, you know, so many degrees, and the surrounding temperature. Okay, so that's what you have to know A is. And K represents the constant. Okay, so K is some constant that we probably don't know. We'll probably have to figure it out. Okay, so there we go. Now, here comes our problem. Let's grab that formula. So Newton's law says this. Okay, so a cheesecake is taken out of the oven. See, finally some math we can use here. Okay, just kidding. Okay, so if you like cheesecake, with an ideal internal temperature of 165, that's the initial temperature. So that's the starting temp.
and it's placed in a 35 degree refrigerator, that's going to be the T sub S. Okay, so T sub ah, sometimes this just moves on its own. The T sub S is going to be the 35 degrees. Okay, so now we know what A is. A is going to be the difference between those two temperatures. So we know A is 130. We probably don't know K, and we probably have to figure it out. It says after 10 minutes. Okay, so time is in minutes. So we'll put in 10 for 10 minutes. Um, we do know the, uh, the surrounding temperature was 35, so we can put that in. The cheesecake. So after 10 minutes, the cheesecake is cooled to 150. So now the temperature is 150 degrees after it's gone through those 10 minutes of cooling in the fridge. So that's how the formula gets figured out. The temperature is now 150. The difference between the starting temp and the surrounding temp is 130. We figured that out up here. Um, it was 10 minutes to do this, and the initial uh, or the surrounding temperature is 35. Okay, we can solve that for K. So subtract 35 from both sides. Ah, I'm solving for K. Um, divide by 130. Uh, natural log it. So the natural log of 115 divided by 130. Uh, those parentheses are important. It's going to equal the natural log of e to the 10k. But that's just going to be 10k. That's why we did it. And then just divide by both sides by 10. So k is going to equal the natural log of 115 divided by 130. Um, and, oops, divided by 10. I didn't divide by 10. That's approximately going to be, let's see what we get. So we go to our calculator, um, and I'm going to go natural log 115 divided by 130, close the parenthesis, and divide that by 10. And I'm getting 0 0.21799. So um, I don't know if we want to go five decimal places. Actually, it rounds up. Let's, let's go to four decimal places. Two, one, eight, zero. Okay, so I have a concern that this is wrong. So I must have put something wrong in my calculator. Uh, but that happens. So, and the reason I know it's wrong is because it's supposed to be negative, right? This is a decay situation. So let's redo it on our calculator. Um, natural log of 115. Divided by 130, close the parenthesis, and then divide that by 10. Now I'm getting like negative 0 0.0123. Okay, so we'll just go with that many decimal places. All right, so now we have a formula. We've got K. So T of T, the temperature based on time, is equal to A, that difference in temperatures we talked about, e to the negative 0 0.0123 times t plus the surrounding temperature. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to use, and I don't have the problem. Where's the problem? Oh, the cheesecake. Okay, so we got the formula. Sorry, it's the problem's up here. If we must wait until the cheesecake is cooled to 70 before we can eat it, how long do we have to wait? Okay, so... I had to assume a couple things. First of all, we want the temperature to be 70 degrees. Um, we already know A. A was 130, which I should have put that in for some reason I didn't. And we know T sub S is 35. Okay, so we're going to figure out how long we have to wait. And we're talking about how long out of it after it comes out of the oven. Okay, so subtract 35 from both sides. You know, you do a few of these problems, and a lot of the calculation part, the algebra, is just the same. So we're going to divide by 130. This is my long video for the cheesecake problem. The cheesecake's worth it. Okay, so the natural log 
of 35 over 130 is just going to equal that negative 0.0123t. So think about taking the natural log. So we need to divide this by negative 0 0.0123 uh, to get t. And so we want to put this in our calculator. So let me clear out my calculator. Natural log of 35 divided by 130. Close that parenthesis. Divided by negative 0 0.0123. And I get time is approximately 107 minutes. So in 107 minutes, we can eat the cheesecake.